My name is Simon Leather. I'm Professor of Entomology here at Harper Adams University. And what I want to spend the next four or five minutes doing is talking to you about my favourite group of insects, aphids. Now, when people mention the word aphids, people tend to think pests. And this is really unfair to aphids. There's about 4,000 species of them, and only 250 are actually pests, causing us uh, damage to our crops and things like that. The rest of them are beautiful, as you can see from these photos, they're beautiful, ranging from the banana aphid with its lovely wing patterns to the large willow aphid, which has got this really mysterious shark's fin on its back. We don't know what it does, it's just part of the wonderful world of aphids. So what I'm going to talk to you about first is actually what is an aphid. So an aphid is a true bug. So true bugs are hemiptera. And hemiptera are characterised by having piercing and sucking mouth parts. And the best way to envisage this is to think about, say, a hypodermic needle. And the mouth parts are called stylets, and there's two stylets which join together to form a tube. Now, because they have piercing and sucking mouth parts, aphids feed on liquid. They don't, don't feed on solid food. And the liquid that aphids feed on is plant sap. And this is the stuff that plants send up in the phloem tubes from the roots to the aerial parts to provide nutrition to the shoots and the leaves. And the aphid wants to tap into these. So the first thing the aphid has to do is get to those phloem tubes. And this is what the stylet is for. And depending on the depth of the phloem tubes, depending on what the host plant they're feeding on, the stylets can range from being fairly short to enormously large. As you can see in this small aphid here, that feeds through the bark of sycamore. And you can see on this picture that the mouth parts are actually about three times larger and longer than the aphid. So anyway, the aphid finds its host plant, it lands on the leaf, and it probes with its stylets. And stylets, although I've said they're a bit like a hypodermic needle, they're actually very flexible. So these can wiggle their way through the plant tissue until they get to the phloem. And this is where the next problem comes for the aphid. Phloem is under pressure. It's coming up from the roots to the top of the plant. So it's, the plant is pushing it up there. And if the aphid just opened its mouth, as it were, the, flo the phloem sap would rush straight into the aphid and it would blow up like a balloon. So the aphid has a little valve and it uses this valve to regulate the flow of the sap into, the, uh, into its body. And then we come to problem number two for the aphid. Phloem sap is largely composed of sugary water with a few amino acids in there. And what the aphid actually wants are the amino acids, the nitrogen, to build its body cells, to grow bigger, to produce babies. So most of what the aphid is taking in is sugary water that it doesn't want. So what it does is it takes in uh, large amounts of sugary water which it excretes at the back end and this is the honeydew that makes plants sticky and which bees and uh, uh, ants like to feed on. So there is a nice useful byproduct for other insects from the aphids feeding uh, habits. So there you are, the aphid is now safely attached to the plant, it's feeding away happily, the next thing it wants to do is reproduce and that's where it takes me on to the other thing that I really like about aphids, their way of reproduction. So most people don't realise that when you see an aphid you're actually looking at a member of a clone. Most of the year, aphids are clonal organisms uh, and they don't need a male to reproduce. So they reproduce parthenogenetically. And the other fascinating thing about aphid reproduction is that they bear live young. So most insects lay eggs, aphids bear live young. And these are known as nymphs. So when you're looking at an aphid, what you're actually seeing is a mother aphid and inside that mother aphid, you have a whole line of embryos. You don't have eggs. And inside those embryos, there's more embryos. So we have a mother, daughter, and granddaughters. And I guess the easiest way to think about that is to think of a, a Russian doll. Here's the mother aphid. Inside that mother aphid are more aphids all ready to be born. And inside those aphids are more aphids. So it's a fascinating way of reproducing. Um, it's called telescoping of generations, and it's one of the reasons why aphids are such successful beasts. In fact, if we didn't have natural enemies and there was unlimited food, it's been calculated that in a one year, aphids could cover the whole surface of the globe to a depth of 149 kilometers. Now, isn't that wonderful? And some aphids have got such nice, uh, clear skin that you can actually see inside them for, without having to cut them open. And if their offspring are a different colour than they are, as in the small willow aphid here, where as you can see the nymphs inside, the embryos are orange and the mother is green, you can actually see them all lined up 
all ready to be born. And that then takes me on to my final thing I want to tell you about aphids, which is colour. So most people, you mention the word aphids to them, and they think green fly, black fly. But actually, aphids come in a huge range of colours. And with a little bit of imagination, as you can see in this picture here, you can construct an aphid rainbow all the way through from red to violet. And that's just yet another reason why I love aphids so much.